HVAC fixed costs. How do you measure up? Hi, this is Josh Horn, CPA of Horn Valuation. I help owners build, value, and sell their business. I'm talking about fixed costs today. These are the costs you have to pay every single month to keep your HVAC company running. Why have I waited until now to talk about fixed costs? Well, the reason is, is because by definition, they're fixed. That means they're harder to change, right? Secondly, I found that in order, generally, gross profit margin, that is pricing on your HVAC jobs and cash trapped in the balance sheet are generally going to be places you want to look at first. Fixed costs, however, are still important. I'm gonna break this down in a simple way with only six major categories. So you can look at your HVAC P&L and go, okay, I'm over or under here. Why might that be? And then what can I do to fix that? So let's take a look at this and get you on to the rest of your day. I'm gonna set the stage here with a $2 million HVAC company. I showed this to you before in a prior post. Let's use this one as a reference point and then we're gonna break down the operating expenses or overhead, also known as the fixed costs. Note that with the average $2 million HVAC company, they're getting a $920,000 gross profit. Their fixed costs are $790,000 a year, and that leaves them with a profit before taxes of $130,000. We're gonna zero in on the $790,000 today using the six categories. Here are the six major categories of fixed costs, also known as operating expenses. You'll see here that that includes the administrative wages, the owner wages, I may be talking to an owner now or an aspiring owner, insurance, rent, utilities, and other facility costs, depreciation, which is likely a proxy for capital expenditures for equipment and related, and advertising and marketing. And I broke these down in percentage categories from high to low so that you can go through here and look at these and ask yourself when you look at your P&L or income statement, are these higher or lower than my operation? Some things to keep in mind. The guidance in the industry from other industry experts suggest that you should have generally one office worker for every three to four technicians or installers. Do you have that? And if you're heavy on administrative people, maybe not. Is that something you should consider changing or is it working fine? Questions to ask yourself. Owner wages. The key here is not for me to judge you on your owner's salary, whether it's high or low. The key is, are you getting a return on investment for your owner salary time? If you are, maybe this is too low. If you aren't, maybe it's too high. Those are the questions you really need to ask yourself about your salary. Now, note that in a lot of cases, when I see HVAC income statements or P&Ls, or quite frankly, any business P&Ls, there isn't always a line item for the owner wages for obvious reasons, because maybe that is going to a group of internal staff, or maybe it's even going to an outside source that maybe you don't necessarily want them to see that breakdown. In any event, you want to track it somewhere, some way, so that you can measure it against these benchmarks once in a while. You need to understand whether it's too high or too low, and at the same time, protect confidentiality of you as the owner. Note that these two together are approximately 22% for administrative salaries, including the owner. That's another thing to keep in mind too here is you could have some reallocations in the percentages between owner and administrative staff. However, as a whole, if you're over 22%, it's worth asking, 
is it too high? And just a reminder, we're talking about 22% of your gross sales here. All of these are percentages of your sales. Insurance. In this business, in your business, insurance can be a heavy cost. We're talking about work compensation, health insurance, liability insurance, vehicle insurance. Is it too high or too low? This is tricky because if you drop your coverages too low and you have something bad happen, that can wipe you out. However, you don't want to overpay for things that you'll never use. So it's a careful balancing act there and you need to be in touch with a specialist in your industry in insurance that can advise you on this. It's always a good idea to get at least a second opinion too on your insurance. What about your rent, utilities, and facility? That's running at about 5% in the industry. How does yours look? Higher or lower? If it's higher, do you have unused space in your facility? Is it too much? If it's lower, do you have room to grow? What are your options? Moving isn't fun. However, it's something to keep in mind if this is hamstringing your ability to have a profitable HVAC company. Depreciation, as I discussed earlier, is an estimate similar to what your capital expenditure should be for equipment, which includes trucks, machines, computer equipment, things like that. When you're in a high growth phase, that number may be higher than 3%. One of the things to keep in mind here is I am definitely not a proponent of buying trucks just to save money on taxes if those wheels aren't going to be turning and turning that into cash flow quickly. You do not want idle vehicles. They will burn cash and it will not be worth the tax savings. In fact, you'll probably run at a loss, which won't matter in the tax scheme of things. How about advertising and marketing? 1% is about the industry average. However, as I research this further, if you're in a growth phase or you want to be in a growth phase, up to 5% is not out of line. So if you're really trying to gain market share, keep in mind 1% may not be near enough. So you may want to ratchet that up so that you can get more leads. The key is to measure that return on investment for advertising, which I see very few HVAC companies actually measure that. Are you getting the leads based on the dollars that you're putting out there? Parting thoughts. Real quickly, only take a couple of seconds. Are you above or below 40% for your fixed costs for your HVAC company? If you're over, take a look at the six categories. Why? Which ones are you over on? If you're under, that could be good, but is it actually hurting your operation? Are you making the investments that you need to be making? Particularly, I'm thinking in terms of staff and advertising. Those could be some needle movers for you. Remember, though, Go back to your job profitability too. Because if you are getting killed on your gross profit margin, you're not getting anywhere near 35 to 45% on your jobs. At some point, trying to cut your fixed costs may be hurting you worse than if you just left them alone and just tried to price jobs more appropriately. This is Josh Horn, CPA of Horn Valuation. These are some of the reasons why you need to take a look at fixed costs and how you can figure out if you measure up.